So I don't think I have talked about this at all on my channel yet. I've been meaning to, but I just kept forgetting. Um, so I have started the process of getting bottom surgery covered by OHIP, which is Ontario Health Insurance Plan. It's our government's health care. Um, and uh, they recently changed uh, earlier this year um, that you don't have to go through CAMH in Toronto, which is a hospital, mental health hospital, um, in order to get uh, trans surgeries covered by OHIP. Now you can uh, get this thing called a prior approval form and have um, doctors and physicians or registered social workers, like different, um, it's all outlined on the, the form who is uh, qualified to fill it out. Um, so basically the government, the Ontario government has opened up um, to make it, I guess, easier for people to uh, get approval for funding for surgeries, um, and as opposed to having to go through everybody in the province going through CAMH, which caused really long waiting lists, though I'm pretty sure the waiting lists are still long anyway. Um, it's just that you don't have to go through CAMH to get funding. Um, I really don't know how it works because it's a new thing and I can't, like I haven't been able to find anybody to help me with it. Um, so I've just been doing this myself and I'm hoping that it works. Um, so anyway, uh, the prior approval form was a pain in the butt to get a hold of. Uh, on the Ontario government website, um, it has a link and says you, you must fill out the prior approval form. You click the link and it takes you to a page that says this cannot be displayed on your browser or whatever. Um, and every single computer, like I had, I scheduled a doctor's appointment because I knew I'd need my doctor to uh, fill out part of this form um, and do this referral. So I waited three weeks for a doctor's appointment because my doctor's, that's the, pretty much the waiting time is about a month to get an appointment. Um, I go in and we try and open this form and it says it can't be opened and it couldn't be opened on any of my computers. And so basically that appointment was kind of a waste of time. Um, because she, like, at least I got it talked about. So I, I brought it up and said, this is what I need done. I need to get this referral. And she's like, yeah, sure, for sure. And then she went on a rant about how it's stupid that this far in my transition, I, I need several doctor notes in order to get this surgery covered. And it's such like, it's a roundabout way of doing things. And it's just a lot of work and paperwork and process and all this stuff for me, who's been transitioning for, like she, she said, it's ridiculous that they need like super, like more confirmation that I'm so sure that this is what I want or need. Um, when I've already had two surgeries and been in the hormones for so long, um, she went on a rant and I agreed with everything she said. I was like, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, but anyway, so she's like, well, I'm going to have to contact the, uh, Ontario, like the government and get them to fax the form. And so anyway, I'm sitting at home for a month worrying about this form and being like, what are they going to contact me when they get a hold of it so that I can help them fill it out and make sure they have all the information correct. Um, basically I was just like pacing around my house for a month. And so I finally decided, okay, I haven't heard anything. I'm going to call. And so I call and I say, Hey, um, I just want to make sure that you guys don't send the form in without letting me check it over first. And they're like, Oh, we don't have the form yet. Then we've been trying to contact, uh, we've been trying to get this form on several different computers. We've contacted, the government to try and send it to us and they weren't responding and um because there is like on the thing it says if you need assistance or whatever contact this number um and so they've been calling and emailing and trying to get someone to send this form and nobody was responding so um i i got really frustrated and i was like okay it's been a month since my appointment which means now at this point it's been two months since i've decided to get this process started and not, and we're literally nowhere. We have moved nowhere in that amount of time. And so um, I'm like, okay. Also, I didn't tell my parents that I was doing this. Um, I didn't want to have that conversation yet because I knew that it is, it's a big surgery and I know that my parents are, or my mom basically, I didn't want to tell my mom, um, is very nervous about it. And so I haven't literally, I literally have not talked about my mom or talked about bottom surgery with my parents ever 
my mom brought it up once, like two or three years ago, and she did not have very confident things to say about it. She, I just, I know that she's anxious about it, so I didn't want to stress them out, um, which means I didn't want to ask for any help. Bad idea. So I asked my dad for help um, because he's good with computers and stuff. So we went on his computer, and it said the same thing: form cannot be accessed. Um, and and then we went through a ton of steps, and eventually. Uh, it took about 40 minutes, but we got the form. Um, we got access to it, so he printed it for me, and he didn't ask any questions because that's the kind of guy my dad is. He, he, there's no way in hell he didn't see what it said. It literally says on the top of it, prior approval form for OHIP-funded sexual reassignment surgery. That's what it says. And so uh, he didn't ask any questions. He just printed it for me and, and gave it to me, and then we tried faxing it to my doctor, and it didn't work. And um, so then I was getting kind of worried because I don't know if my doctor's even qualified to fill this out. Um, so I called my endocrinologist and I was like, hey, I have this form. I want to know if you're qualified to fill this out. Um, I need two physician, nurse practitioner, social worker. I need two, um, they call them, um, uh, what is it? I wish I, I wish I had the form with me, but I literally just gave it to my doctor. Um, whatever. Uh, basically, two um, people with certain qualifications saying that I am um, qualified to have this surgery, basically, um, and that I that I have gender dysphoria and that I've been on hormones for at least twelve months and that I've been living in my um, you know, gender male, basically living as a male for at least a year. Um, and so anyway, I call my endocrinologist and they said, yeah, fill out as much of the form as you were able to fill out and then fax us the form and we'll take it from there. And so I filled it out and I tried faxing it and it wasn't working and it wasn't working and, I, and it kept coming up with the error code saying that it was their end that was the problem that it was, their line was busy or not connected. And I figured out after days of trying to fax this form and getting very, very angry, um, I realized it was my machine that wasn't working. And so I went through the steps, I troubleshooted and went and tried to fix it, and then it still came up with the same error code, and I just got really mad and was like, okay, Dad, tomorrow I need to drive to my GP, which is closer, because my endocrinologist is about an hour and a half hour and a half in traffic away, um, whereas my general practitioner is about 20 minutes away. Um, so I was like, okay, we're going to drive to my GP tomorrow morning, drop the forms off with them, and ask them to fax it to my endocrinologist, um, and go from there. So the next morning, woke up, went to my GP, and I was at this point so frustrated because my endocrinologist, when you call them, they have one of those phone automated systems where it's like, we'll call you back within 24 hours. So literally it was like a waiting game for like a week of, of playing phone tag and waiting at home all day for a call that didn't ever come. And then they'd call the next day and I wasn't home. And then it was like, it was just ridiculous. I was getting so mad. The fax machines were pissing me off. The phone, the answering machine was piss pissing me off. It, it, it just made me very mad and feeling out of control. And I do not like to feel out of control in my situations. Um, and I feel extremely out of control in this situation because there's nothing I can do to speed this process up. It's literally just a waiting game and hoping that other people do their, their jobs and do their part properly. Um, so anyway, I take the form in and I talk to the receptionist and finally I had someone to talk to face to face where I could literally say, this is what I need. And they say, yes, I understand you in real time and I don't have to deal with phone bullshit. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I dropped the forms off. I feel a lot better. Um, that was, was that yesterday or the day before? I don't remember. I think it was yesterday. Um, but uh, so that has been the last couple months of my life have been like literally pacing around my house and being feeling very out of control and very frustrated, very anxious and obsessive compulsive. Um, and this whole, like, this is not going to be a fun process. Like, regardless of surgery and how terrified I am of this surgery. Oh, I'm, I'm, um, 
I didn't even say this, I am uh, looking at phalloplasty, uh, uh, radial forearm phalloplasty with uh, Dr. Broussard in Montreal. Um, so yeah, so regardless of actual surgery stress, um, I'm just stressed about this process right now because I have no idea if um, what's going to happen with this referral. Like, is it good, how long it's going to take them to get back to me, um, like the government, and if it's going to be denied, then I have to go through this call again and figure out what happened, what went wrong, and redo it and do it properly, and um, and then just dealing with the stress of trying to figure out um, what how I want this surgery to go, what I want, what I want done. And, um, yeah, my parents do know now, by the way, um, I told them yesterday and they were not as, uh, they, they just kind of accepted it, which was very good. Um, I'll probably just make another video about that, but this is the stressful process that is trying to get OHIP to cover surgery. Um, yeah, it's frustrating, and because everything is so vague. The form itself, once I got a hold of the prior approval form, everything on that was so straightforward. It was very easy to fill out and everything. It's just getting a hold of that was such a pain, and I just wish that I had doctors that like knew how to do this stuff, um, because they don't really seem very knowledgeable. I don't know. Um, it's frustrating. And I know that people are just trying to help. And I'm trying very hard to not get frustrated and not be angry at the system. My dad said to me yesterday, he said, getting angry at the system in the process is doing nobody any good. So you need to, you know, take a breath, calm down and accept that this is something that is going to happen. Um, there's going to be frustrating parts. Um, but you need to kind of handle it better. Um, cause I, I've been a tyrant. I've been very angry, obsessive, compulsive, and stressed for the past, pretty much the past like two weeks has been really bad. But, um, yeah, it's been about a couple months now of trying to get this process going and I'm literally nowhere. Um, yeah, I was kind of hoping to have the form already sent in by now, but my doctor said they'll call me as soon as the form is being sent out to the government. Um, so yeah waiting on that but just an update about uh where i'm at right now <laughs> um yeah thank you for watching if you have any questions comments video topics anything like that let me know um subscribe if you haven't already and thanks again for watching